For this week's uh, module, I decided to look at game-based learning. Um, there's so many different um, great sites out there to use for game-based learning. Um, you know, things like Quizlet and Kahoot. Um, and one that I kind of went to work with, um, I had I had spoken with co colleagues around uh, around my school and and did some research as well. And it, it seemed that Kahoot was really popular amongst both teachers and students. Um, it creates these really highly engaging, um, you know, kind of quiz games that the students can challenge each other and they can accumulate points based on the fastest answers. Um, just really creating these engaging, fun lessons. Uh, for mine, I actually, just, for my lesson, I decided to actually make two different cahoots. Um, the first cahoot is something of a bell ringer or anticipatory set where the kids would do it right as they come into the room. Uh, they have there's five, uh, 10 basic questions that kind of cover the literary elements. Um, you know, you know, what is a character? What's the problem in the story theme setting? All those things. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to deeply go into the post activity because you'll see that some of the prop, there's a lot of the same questions as well as some additional questions that are a little deeper and, and ask the students to do a little bit more. But another great thing about Kahoot is that uh, after students complete it, uh, you're actually able to view the results and kind of use them as assessment and, and determine where students struggle the most or where students might need to work on. Or maybe you can see that the majority of your class didn't answer the correctly for theme. So you can kind of work on that. Um, and it's a great way for the students to see what they are unsure of as well. So along with the cahoots in this lesson, the, the students will also be assigned a sort of a smart no notebook activity that goes over all of the different story elements. Um, I'm not going to, so because Kahoot is the more focus here, I'm going to just quickly go through this. Um, the nice thing about this is it allows you to differentiate uh, students who maybe are better independent learners. They are able to access on their own personal devices and can go through it on their own. Um, or if you have, you know, you could have a group of students working on their own. You can have a group of students working on it in a larger group led by the teacher. Or you could even choose to go and do it whole group. Um, so you'll see that it just kind of, you can click on each one and it will take you to different activities to help students work on, um, you know, developing their knowledge for for the story elements. And, you know, as I said, you can kind of differentiate. Students can work at their own pace or they can work with a partner. Um, really whatever fits yours best. So you have conflict, you have theme setting, and then it, it goes into some deeper things with conflict, uh, with characters. And, you know, it just gives students the opportunity to do some self-taught learning uh, rather than, you know, me standing in front or a teacher standing in the front of the classroom and and just kind of directing them to what to do. Um, so they would do that after the anticipatory set, knowing that at the end of the class, they would have to complete their final Kahoot. Um, you can see this is the pre-activity, the final being the post-activity. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through it and kind of talk about some of the questions and, and why I chose to do it the way I did. Um, so here's a good look at how to use the Kahoot uh, with the little, you can have students use devices like phones or like laptops. So it's really great, really accessible. Um, as long as you have some way to project the questions. So you can do the one-to-one -one or the shared devices, depending on what your classroom is. In my class, I would choose to do uh, a classic. Another great thing is that it gives you game uh, options. So random, randomized order of questions I always think is good, especially after doing the pre-activity, so they don't kind of expect them coming in the same order, as well as randomizing the order of answers. Uh, you know, that randomness is always nice. Um, and you also have the automatically move through questions, or you can kind of, as the teacher, you click to do it. Uh, I personally would use the automatically for this, and just for going through it, I'm going to use keep it off. Um, and then the name generator, you can turn that on or off. Kids really like developing, uh, you know, creating their own names and their own tags. Um, as long as they know to keep it school appropriate, I think it's, it's nice to leave that off and give them that. So you would click Classic. In the Kahoot screen, this would be what would is displayed up on so you'll you'll hear the Kahoot music. You may not hear it here, but um, the Kahoot music will 
you know, sometimes be distracting. It's up to you whether you want to leave it on. Um, or, you know, sometimes you can put on, you know, different music if you prefer. But that's a total preference and based on the class. So what you'll do is to have the students enter their PIN. And it'll take them to the game. They'll enter their nickname. Now, with Kahoot 2, most of the quest or all of the questions are going to be selected response. As you get to the premium version of Kahoot, you can kind of add some different puzzle type responses. But in the at the basic level, it's uh, true and false and multiple choice. Um, so it's really important to make sure your questioning is done right and all that to make the questions more effective. So once all the kids are signed in, you would hit start, give the kids opportunities. So it'll first ask the question, uh, what type of conflict is displayed? Uh, Iva chose to include some images that might kind of jog the kids' memories because this is all old material for them. Um, you can see that there's time here. Uh, depending on the question, you might give them more time. Looking at this, I might say character versus nature. That's what the student would pick. It shows you what the class, you know, across the board did. You know, if, if a bunch of kids maybe picked character versus character here and not character versus character, nature it might be something that you know that you need to revisit as a class. Um, and as you can see, based on how quickly I responded to the question was the points. Each point, each question's worth a thousand questions. So it kind of gives the kids motivation to like work quickly and see how fast they can answer. Um, and based on their first quiz, uh, you know, they might want to improve their score and get the questions right that they didn't previously. Um, so here we have uh, not as much of a written, but an image where they have to look at an image and determine the type, just like the last one. Um, so they might say, you know, character verse. If you can see the two people fighting, they might say character verse character. That would be correct. Based on how fast I answered, I got the points. Um, so this would be a recycled question from the previous one, just the basic, another image to kind of make them maybe just think, see the city, uh, and then they would pick whichever one they think it is. Uh, and now I'm just going to kind of go through some of the pictures or some of the other questions. So another question from the original, them thinking about the different types of conflict. This is something they would have gone through in the smart notebook. Um, the theme of the story all right so it's getting them thinking is theme where it takes place the problem in the story the events in the story or the message of the story um, you know they might click they would see that I got it right based on the time so this is a different type this is where we use a clip uh, using YouTube you can embed videos uh, you can see the time over here uh, the timer won't start until the YouTube video is done. And basically what their job here um, is to, you know, I, I would start the clip, they would watch the clip, and they would determine, obviously, the, the uh, character trait that best describes SpongeBob. Um, you know, you'd see a bunch of different things. And, you know, I use, I chose yellow here because often students might think that character trait is a physical trait, not a, you know, something that as a personality trait. And then I chose some words that have uh, similar meanings. Um, and the other with the questioning, the one that best describes SpongeBob. So them kind of having to use their deductive reasoning to determine, uh, well, is he miserable or is he angry? And then they would decide that he is more angry than miserable. Um, and then we just keep going through. This is another video question that they would see. Um, this is a video from Ruby Bridges in which they'd watch and they'd have to determine, all right, which, what type of thing. You know, it is character versus society, but they might see all oh, these people are all yelling at her. Maybe it's character versus character, but here they would get it incorrect and they would just be letting know that. Um, also, a fun little thing is it lets them know what place they are in in their class uh, the whole time. Um, so we'll just kind of go through the rest of these questions. Um, here's another recycled one to see if they, you know, if we improve from the, the first one. Another image to kind of help them go through it. Um, and as you can see, if I skip it, then the, the player would get it wrong as well. 
Um, so here's one, a different way. So this is where they actually have to read something uh, and determine. This is why I kind of gave them more time here. Uh, you know, if you had a class of lower achieving students, you might decide that you want to read this out loud to them, but then they would use the information here to determine a character trait that describes Jonathan. Um, here's an example of a true-false. His protagonist is always a good guy or a bad guy. Okay, they would have to pick. Is it true? Is it false? Okay, um, that would be false. We move forward. You know, another example from the first question where they're trying to improve from what they did the first time. And as you can really see, um, as, we, as we get towards the end, um, uh, one of the great things is that you'll get these reports that allow you to see the information and see how your kids did and really use the information as a teacher and determine, you know, are there things that you need to cover more in class? Um, you know, do you have to do many lessons based on the information that you've gathered? Um, and just really through using this and through speaking with colleagues, uh, just the, the competition, the game, the fun noises, the pictures, it's amazing how much more that does engage uh, the students, um, while this can act as an assessment, the students don't, it doesn't have the negative connotation that a test or a quiz might have. Um, it's kind of just, you know, a fun game where they're competing against their classmates and, you know, in order for them to win and do well, then, you know, they need to perform well and they have to get the questions correct, which means they have to be prepared and, and be paying attention to the content in class. Here we have another one where they determine the the conflict based on the image, you have the angel and the devil, the character of herself. Um, and as we get to the end, all right, uh, this is another question that would have been recycled, one that you can kind of monitor and see growth from your students just in that one class period from going through the two cahoots as well as going through the smart notebook. So you can see, you know, there's all... It tells you who did the best since I was the only one. Obviously, it tells them how many questions, how many points. Um, there's the get feedback. Um, so you can show the feedback and it tells you kind of like the students can tell you, oh, I really like this one. Um, I didn't like it. Uh, you know, you can make a recommendation. Um, so just really great. You can always play it again. You can do a new game. Um, so just a really great tool to help engagement, to help, you know, and this is where the engagement, as I said, with the rating, you can rate it. Oh, I, you know, I like this one was kind of fun. The other one was more fun, so they can kind of rate it. Did you learn something new? Um, would you recommend it? Did it make, you know, how did it make you feel? And then as the teacher, you can see it, not only seeing their results, but as well as seeing, you know, how the kids did as well. So that's Kahoot. That's how uh, the, the lesson is going to go. Um, I look forward to using this in my class. Like I said, it's going to be a great way to kind of start the year and get kids familiarized with different story elements. And yeah, thank you.